In this lecture, we're going to discuss the second type of triaxial test. It's called consolidated untrained triaxial test. And this is actually the most common triaxial test. And from this consolidated untrained uh, triaxial test, you can get both the total stress shear strength parameters and the effective stress shear strength parameters. So remember, we discussed the two stages of uh, the general two stages of uh, triaxial test for consolidated untrained test. In the first stage, when you apply that all around pressure, uh, you keep the drainage open to allow the excess pore pressure you see to dissipate. So at the end of stage one, the excess pore pressure is zero, and in this process, the soil uh, specimen consolidated, so it's called consolidated test. In the second stage, uh, when you apply the divitor stress, you keep the drainage closed. So the, sham the, the soil specimen is sheared to failure under undrained condition. And that's why it's called consolidated undrained test. And uh, if you look at the two figures on the right, so in the consolidation stage, excess pore pressure you see is uh, dissipated, so it's zero at the end of the consolidation. And the excess pore pressure generated during the shearing stage is called UD or delta UD. And this delta UD will increase as you shear the specimen. And then we can define this Scampton's pore pressure parameter, A bar which is the ratio of uh, delta UD, that's where excess pore pressure during the shearing stage, over delta sigma D. So that's the divitor stress or the shear stress you applied. So that's a general procedure of a CO triaxial test. And um, in the consolidated untrained triaxial test, um, the, there are total and effective uh, principal stresses so we define here first the total major principal stress at failure we call sigma 1. And sigma 1 is basically the minor principal stress, sigma 3, plus the divitor stress, delta uh, sigma d at failure. And then the effective major principal stress, we call sigma 1 prime, is basically total stress sigma 1 minus the excess pore water pressure at failure, we call delta UDF. And then for minor principal stress, um, so sigma 3, that's your minor or total minor principal stress at failure. And this is also your chamber confining stress. And then the effective minor principal stress at failure, sigma 3 prime, is the, the difference between total stress sigma 3 and the uh, excess pore pressure, delta UD. And note that for uh, triaxial test, the divitor stress, delta sigma D, is the difference between total major principal stress, sigma 1, and total minor principal stress, sigma 3. And it's also equal to the effective major principal stress and the effective minor principal stress. So that's the uh, principal stresses at failure for CO triaxial test. And this is picture, uh, this is a, a specimen sheared to failure under uh, consolidated undrained triaxial test. And this slide shows uh, some typical patterns of the increase or the evolution of divitor stress delta U sigma D and the evolution of excess pore water pressure, delta UD, as you shear the specimen. So on the left-hand side, these two figures are for loose sand and normally consolidated clay, or NC clay. For uh, this type of soil, as you increase the axial strain, as you shear the specimen, the divitor stress, delta sigma D, increases, and the excess pore water pressure, delta UD, also increases. And on the right-hand side are uh, behavior of dense sand and OC clay or over-consolidated clay. And for this type of uh, soil, uh, the divitor stress initially increases with the axial strain. 
until it reaches the peak value, we call delta sigma df. That's where we define the uh, uh, failure um, divitor stress. And then after that peak value, divitor stress decreases. And for the uh, excess pore water pressure behavior, for thin sand and OC clay, the excess of pore water pressure initially increases, and then it starts to decrease as you continue to shear the specimen, as you continue to increase the axial strain. And this decrease of excess pore water pressure is because there is a tendency of the soil to dilate, to expand as you shear the specimen. And this is a characteristic behavior of dense sand and OC clay. Uh, to determine the shear strength parameters from consolidated undrained triaxial tests, uh, we typically perform this test on several similar specimens, and each one with a different confining pressure, sigma 3. So shown on this slide are more circles and more failure envelopes corresponding to two specimens. And first, if you look at these two solid line more circles, so this circle B and circle A, so these are total stress more circle. So total stress more circle. And the failure envelope, which is tangent to this more circle and passes origin and if it's sand and normally consolidated clay. So the failure envelope is called total stress failure envelope. And you have tau f, the shear strength, equals to sigma, the normal stress on the failure plane, times tangent of phi. So this phi is a total stress friction angle. So that's a solid line more circle. And then you also have these two dashed line more circles. And these are effective stress more circles. So effective stress more circle. And the failure envelope fitted to the effective stress more circle is called the effective stress failure envelope. Again, for sand and normally consolidated clay, this failure envelope passes the origin. So the function for this failure envelope tau f is sigma prime times tangent of phi prime, where phi prime is the uh, fr internal friction angle. So from consolidated undrained triaxial test, you can get um, both the total stress and the effective stress uh, shear strength parameters. So for the total stress uh, uh, strength, uh, shear strength parameters, we call phi here the consolidated undrained angle of shearing resistance. And this phi is calculate, calculated using the total major and minor principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 3. And then you also have, you can also get the effective friction angle phi prime from CO triaxial test. And this phi prime is calculated using effective principal stresses, sigma 1 prime and sigma 3 prime. And if you substitute the relationship between effective stress, so effective major principal stress sigma 1 prime is sigma 1 minus delta u d at failure. And then for sigma 3 prime, it's total stress sigma 3 minus the excess pore pressure delta, delta U D at failure. So if you substitute these two expressions, you get this uh, final expression on the right hand side here. So that's for effective friction angle phi prime. And then you can define Scampton's pore pressure parameter at failure called A F bar as the ratio of divitor or the, the ratio of uh, excess pore pressure delta U D at failure over the divitor stress at failure. And this AF bar is between 0.5 and 1 for normally consolidated clays. And it's negative. It's between negative 0.5 and a 0 for over consolidated clays. 